Australia. Been a hell of a week last week. I'm sure there's many among you who have been affected by what happened. In my case, the water was within an inch of my front door on Sunday. And I had, we had water in our block. Ducks swimming in my in my front yard uh, up through Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Water finally disappeared uh, Sunday. Uh, my son lives in the Memorial area, and if you've been paying attention, there's a, a rectangle, Highway 6, the Gessner, I-10, the Braves, Forest, right, Briar Park. And he lived right in the middle of that. He had eight feet of water in his house. The house is gone. I mean, the house physically is there, but the rest is a shed. So he and his wife and the children moved in with us. So for the time, just for the time. So uh, we have made adjustments in the syllabus. We will uh, skip section 2.3. Uh, we will uh, look at, uh, restrict the number of applications. Certainly going to look at applications. No reason for studying differential equations and not look at applications. So we'll, uh, we'll look at a few of the applications and then move on to chapter 3. Uh, exam 1 will be held as scheduled and will be adjusted with the new syllabus. Uh, we'll do the best we can with the online quizzes. Because those things have been set up years ago and you can't go in and tinker with them without screwing up the entire program. Uh, but we'll make allowances. For example, on quiz 1, which is due tonight, uh, questions 19 and 20, you, you can't do at this moment. But you will be able to do at 2.30. Okay? Uh, the other questions you can do, and what I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll stay after class today and answer any questions that anybody has about the EMCF, which is due Friday at noon, and quiz one, which is due tonight. Any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll hang around and, and, and answer. Uh, if this room is occupied at 4 o'clock, then I'll go over to, uh, where will I go? Um, I, I guess I'll go over to Agnes Arnold, which is over there, and find an empty room on the first floor. And hope that there's an empty one there. It usually is. Okay. So chapter we 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 did finish chapter one uh, Wednesday week two weeks ago. Um, so chapter two. What I'm going to do is show you two kinds of first order equations that you can solve, and I'm. We'll show you how to solve it. And then we'll look at some applications. Okay. So we have a, a first order differential equation. You can write it in this form just by putting everything on the left side. So you've got some expression which involves x, y, and y prime. y prime for sure has to be there. Whether x and y are there or not, well, it just depends on the equation. For example, you might have y prime minus y equals zero, just as an example. And you say, well, there's no x there. Well, of course, there is an x there. When I write y prime, that means you've taken the derivative with respect to x. So the, the x is there, but implicitly. So when I have a first order equation, the only thing I insist on that this expression involve y prime. It's got to be in the expression. Whatever else is there, well, it varies. Uh, we make a basic assumption that you can solve this expression for y prime. So we're going to be looking at, 
first order equations of the form y prime equals some function of x and y. All right. There are two types that we're going to look at. Type one is called linear. Linear differential equation. First order. First order equation is linear if this function on the right side, if this has the form some function of x times y plus some function of x. Specific. Now you can take this expression, written it here, and I can write this as y prime minus p of x y equals q of x. And there's no sense writing minus capital P. Uh, this is any old function of x. y prime plus p of x y equal q of x. That's called the standard form for a first order linear equation. So there it is, the standard form. Now, what I'll show you in examples is we'll start out with an equation which I'll identify as being linear. And then step one will always be to write it in that form. That's always step one. OK. So here's a simple example. y prime equal 2y. I can write this as y prime minus 2y equals 0. So in this case, the p of x is minus 2, and the q of x is 0. So it's, it's linear. It has that form. It's a very special case. Here. I got your keys. <laughs> <coughs> it's a very special case. What am I going to do? I'm going to multiply this equation by e to the minus 2x. Right? e to the minus 2x is not 0 ever. So now I have a new equation, and it's equivalent to the old. Okay? These two equations are equivalent. They have the same solution set. Multiplying an equation by a non-zero quantity does not change the solution. It changes the equation, but it doesn't change the solutions. So this new equation has the same solutions as the old. And of course, the question, well, why did I do that? Well, because if I look at this, now look at this, this left-hand side is e to the minus 2x times y prime is 0. e to the minus 2x times y prime minus 2 e to the minus 2x times y is the derivative of e to the minus 2x times y. You can always check. This is a, I'm going to take the derivative. This is a product. First, derivative second is this term. Second, derivative of e to the minus 2x minus 2 e to the minus 2x. Now, look at this equation. This says the derivative of this function is 0. So what is this function? There's only one kind of function whose derivative is 0, and that's a constant. And so we get y equals c e to the 2x multiplying both sides by e to the 2x. And here is general solution. Another example. This is linear, right? This is p of x. This is q of x. So y prime, p of x, y, equal q of x, linear. What am I going to do? I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the x squared. e to the x squared, y prime, 2x e to the x squared y is 4x e to the x squared. 
Why did I do that? Because the left hand side is e to the x squared y prime. In other words, what I do, I have a linear, I have a linear equation. I find something to multiply the equation by so that the left side becomes the derivative of the prime. Now we can check, right? e to the x squared times y. From first derivative second, that's precisely that, plus second, the derivative of e to the x squared is 2x e to the x squared. So what I've written is correct. So look at this equation. This says that the derivative of this function, see, I don't really know what that function is because I don't know what y is yet. But the derivative of this is the 